Good evening, one and all. On behalf of Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry, I extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you for the 28th episode of Optometry series. So today's episode is really very, very special because this is the first time out of all the episodes that one of our alumni is pitched in. Thank you so much, Sita Ma'am, for joining with us today. Thank you so much for calling me, actually. It's, it's a feel overwhelming by, to come back to my place where I started everything. I've always been so proud of you, ma'am. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. So the topic for today is the optometrist's role in IOS selection and how to minimize the refractive surprise. I'm very happy that uh, my teammates are also joined us, uh, joined with us today. Thank you so much for joining, Anshika, ma'am. And thank you so much, Meenakshi. And thank you so much for your support. Now I request our MC, Ms. Durka, to kindly introduce our today's moderator. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of Optometry Series. I'm Durga, studying second year optometry at Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry. The topic for today's discussion is the role of optometrists in IOL selection and minimizing op post-operative refractive surprise. And we have a very special guest as our mod moderator today who is not only an expert in the field, but also an estimate alumna of our college. I am very happy to introduce Mrs. Sita Lakshmi Arun Kumar. Ma'am has, so ma has a BSc degree in optometry and an MBA in hospital management. With over a decade of experience, she is currently working as an assistant general manager operation at Vision Expert I Hospital, Chennai. It is truly a pleasure to have a, one of our own alumni leading the way in the world of optometry. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us today. Admit your busy schedule, ma'am. The presenter for today is Ms. Jennifer, a multimedia member and pursuing third year optometry at Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry. Ms. Jennifer, please start your presentation. Thank you, Durga. Thank you so much, ma'am. Hi, this is Jennifer. Today's topic is the role of optometrists in intraocular lens selection and minimizing the post-operative refractive surprise. Introduction. In India, the elderly population has increased from 24.71 million in 1961 to 138 million elderly person by 2021. Among ocular diseases, cataract is a major cause of blindness according to global burden of disease, injuries, and risk factor study, stating that it is the second leading cause of moderate and severe vision impairment. Phacomalsification Facto laser assist cataract surgery and manual small incision cataract surgery are the established surgical modality for treatment. Extra capsular and intra capsular cataract extraction are also performed. Cataract defined as the loss of lens transparency, which causes alternation of refractive properties, resulting in haze vision to blindness. It is associated with detrimental effects such as decreased quality of life and increased risk of accidents. Most cases of cataract occur after birth and sharing aging and oxidative stress as primary causes, although several non-modifiable and modifiable risk factors can accelerate cataract formation. Due to a growing and aging population, its management becomes a socio-economic challenge. Although the surgery is considered to be relatively safe and complicated may be occur in a subset of patients and access to eye care may be limited. When to perform cataract surgery? Cataract removal is not typically a necessary procedure in the elder stages, but it can cause symptoms that inhibit daily life. Symptoms such as easy vision, 
Glaratite, Diplopia, Photophobia, and Halos are the most common complaints in cataract patient and are they treated by cataract removal. It is performed on basis of refractive, medical, therapeutic, and cosmetic purposes. This is the difference between the normal people image and the cataract people image. The normal people have a clear vision, but the cataract people have the cloudiness in front of their eye to see the object. Will cataract progress quickly? Yes, cataracts commonly progress gradually. Several factors can contrib contribute to a seemingly rapid deterioration of vision. Trauma to the eye, such as injury or accidents, can accelerate cataract development or cause an immediate change in vision. Additionally, certain medical condition or the prolonged use of medicated medication like steroid can excite the progress of cataracts. Uncontrolled diabetes, for instance, can lead to accelerated cataract information due to fluctuation in blood sugar level. Certain lifestyle factors such as smoking or prolonged exposure to sunlight without protective eyewear may hasten cataract development. These are the type of cataract. This is a normal crystal lens of the no human being, the normal lens. Immature cataract, mature cataract. This is a yellowish brown color. Hypermature cataract, this is amber brown in color. The opacity occur in the central, in nucleoside, this is nucleosclerotic cataract. The cataract occur in posterior subcapsula and marginal. This is the use to treat the aerial selection. What is aerial? An intraocular lens is a clear, artificial lens implanted to replace the cataract lens during cataract surgery. Types of aerial available. Monofocal lens is correct for one focal distance. Toric aerial lens are designed to correct for a refractive error caused by astigmatism. Multifocal lens designed to correct for both near and distant vision. Accommodative lenses are designed to allow to focus at a different distance. These are a type of aerial. In intraocular lens, there is a five types. Basic monofocal lens, astigmatic correcting monofocal lens, panoptic and panoptic toric, Liberty and synergy and synergy toric. In this type of lens, we can correct the astigmatism in astigmatic correcting monofocal and panoptic optic toric, vivity, synergy, and synergy toric. We can't correct the astigmatism in basic monofocal. Zones of vision without glasses, that means distance, mid-range, and near. In basic monofocal lens, bifocal required for distance and near. Astigmatism correcting monofocal lens for distance, panoptic and panoptic toric, it helps to this distance, mid-range, and near vision. Mid-range for computer research. Vivity for distance and mid-range, and synergy and synergy toric, distance, mid-range, and near vision. Need for glasses after surgery. For basic monofocal lens, we need bifocal or progressive. For astigmatism correcting monofocal lens, reading glasses needed for mid-range and near. Panoptic and panoptic optics, occasionally glasses in some situation. Vivity, reading glasses for near. Synergy and synergy toric, occasionally glasses in some situation. Strength and benefits of the lens implant. In basic monofocal, improved vision through bifocal glasses. Astigmatism correcting monofocal lens, it says helps excellent vision for away without glasses. Panoptic, panoptic tor toric, excellent for computer and near vision. Vivity, excellent for mid, far, and minimal night halo. Synergy and synergy toric, excellent for computer and near vision. Weakness of side effect of the lens implant. In basic monofocal lens, glasses needed full time for best vision. Does not correct astigmatism. In astigmatism correcting monofocal, no ability to refocus mid-range on deer. 
patient will use glasses to see reading distance 100% of the time in all times panoptic and panoptic toric cosmetic lens reflection may be visible to others have a effect around lights at night vivity will need over the counter plus 1.25 glasses to see near synergy and synergy toric halo effect around lights at night nighting glare and halos in basic monofocal lens there is a minimal amount in asymptotic correcting monofocal lens minimal vivity in also minimal but pantoptic and panop pantoptic toric synergic and synergic toric is moderate these are the conditions that occur uh, this is a nuclear cataract cortical cataract posterior subcapsular cataract posterior polar cataract pre operative examinations are detailed history clinical examination in ocular assessment like visual acuity glare and contrast sensitivity refraction pupillary evaluation strip lamp examination and fundus with oct and general assessment lab investigations are blood pressure blood profile and cardiac certificate the investigations are biometry a scan keratometry to calculate the iol formula used in calculating iol popular third generation formula includes offer q polar day 1 and hayes l srk by td in fourth generation formulas like polar day 2 barrett olsen which lies additional measurement to refine refractive results i all formula for calculation for formula there is a two type empirical and regressive in regression there is a three type based on the axial length of the persons hoffer formula axial length less than 22.5 mm so the axial length of the eyeball less than 22.5 mm we can use hoffer formula 22.5 mm to 24.5 mm we can use slkt formula more than 24.5 mm we can use holiday formula refractive surprise refractive surprise is failure to achieve the intended post operative refractive target source of error prior keratorefractive surgery changes in corneal parameter and reoccurrence of power dry eye it leads to poor quality contact lens related corneal wrappage silicon oil in vitreous inaccurate biometry reading wrong iol selection error in axial length measurement an average human eyeball axial length is 24 mm for each 0.3 mm error axial length there is approximately one diopter of post operative refractive error error in calculation of iol power conditions like corneal irregularities corneal edema human error refractive surgery can lead to misinterpretation way to minimize problems overall post operative refractive error after cataract surgery can be prevented by recognizing and adjusting for condition that can confound biometry to avoid measurement errors to select appropriate formula monitoring contact lens use prior to measurements and to treat condition when appropriate and recognizing discrepancy in calculation or important action to consider clinical management of refractive surprise retain viscoelastic nature early laser capsulectomy can destroy the viscoelastic property and allow the anteriorly displaced intraocular lens to move posteriorly corneal refractive surgery like laser refractive surgery prk or lasik is a good option for refractive surprise piggy bank sulcus intraocular lens and intraocular lens exchange thank you thank you so much jennifer it was a very detailed presentation now i request a moderator to share our inputs regarding the failure of iol lenses ma'am thank you jennifer for the great presentation 
So regarding the uh, minimizing the post-operative refractive surprise, first we first we have to choose the lens uh, IOL properly because whenever we are going to choose the IOL, this IOL we can't replace it. Once we once if we have uh, placed the IOL, it should it's very difficult to replace it. So whenever you are choosing the IOL, just make sure that patient uh, patient occupation is very very important while choosing the IOL. In in case if you are going for a higher end lenses like uh, she she told BVT and Panoptics and Synergy, so what recent days what is the thing? Previously in older days what they will do cataract knowledge old people will come and they will do the surgery they want to see that's all in, recently nowadays people wants to get rid of the glasses even if the cataract surgery usually uh, before before sometimes and all only the lasik will correct the, uh, the, the only the lasik will uh, will do the everything that we are, we are get rid of our glasses but nowadays people expecting even the old people are expecting that they wanted to get rid of their glasses even in the cataract surgery so for that we need to get, know about their occupation what what and all they need based upon that we have to select the lenses first actually people who are going for a drive she already mentioned in the slide that the night glare and halo are uh, more in panoptics and uh, synergy because they are having the rings. So night time, obviously, if the patients or the patients' occupation is driving at night more, so we should not supposed to give the uh, rings, the lens with the rings. So this is the main thing regarding IOL selection as our opto as an optometrist. You should educate the patient. Those who are asking, you should you should know to educate the patient how to uh, uh, select the lenses. Regarding the post-operative uh, uh, reflection, so main thing we should consider is the A scan and keratometry. So I'm I'm speaking about the patient who wants to get rid of glasses in cataract surgery. For that patient, we should be very very careful about the, choosing the uh, doing the keratometry and A scan as well, and choosing the lens. But each each lens will have their separate A constant according to their formulas. We used to do the formula like SRKT offer Q for small axial length and a holiday for a, a big axial length. And nowadays they are using the. Uh, Nowadays they are using the this formula. Um, as she told Barrett, I guess Barrett. Maybe it depends upon the ophthalmologist. Those who are, those who wanted to go for uh, Barrett, they will. So this this are this are all the things we should mainly concentrate because A scan is very much important. Even you are if we are doing optical, there is uh, no problem if sub in mature cataract as she said mature cataract morganian cataract hyper mature cataract the opticals will not the optical biometry will not uh, will not we will not able to get the optical biometer so in that case we have to go by the either uh, immersion method only so in in un immersion or is contact so in that in that area we should be more careful uh, regarding even our we have touched uh, more means that will be end up in the post operative refractive surface then the patient will end up in the either one diopter or two diopter so this is the main thing and for uh, selecting the ios we need to uh, the every ios each and every lenses has different a constant for optical for optical different will be there and for immersion or contact will be there so we have to choose according to that only so this is the main role as our optum as our, as an optometrist we should do whenever we are doing any calculations regarding the ios Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, ma'am, you're audible. Okay. So if she's uh, telling about the clinical management of refractive surprise, the IOL exchange is supposed to be a pre uh, immediate pre uh, post operative. Like we should not uh, go beyond two to three days. It should be the immediate post operative, or else. Even if we are getting, un unfortunately, if we have ended up with any post-operative refractive surface, we should go uh, with uh, pseudophagic LASIK or PRK. This is the only option. But the optums, those who are doing their uh, cataract workup, they should be more, more precise in what they are doing.
So even uh, so, if the patient is uh, already uh, means preoperatively they operated for LASIK or any any surgeries in cornea, then we have opted to go for a uh, face nomogram. That is on calculation or ASCRS calculation. So I've just got uh, which. What kind of measurement? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What kind of, yeah. from room side. Yes, yes. What kind of measurement or errors may occur from the optometrist side? Yes, that, that's what I'm telling about. Even you are doing any k metry. So if you are doing any optical biometer, that there is a chance whether the patient not able to keep their chin properly, whether the patient not able to touch the forehead properly, it mean it, it also may lead to the error. In in by doing manually, maybe the uh, the uh, contact dose you're using, so you're pressing too much, it will create the, suppose, she already mentioned that 0.3 mm, uh, 0.3 mm can lead to one diopter. So imagine if you're doing any more than 0.3 mm, definitely the patient will end up in uh, plus 1.5 or plus 2, either one minus 1.5 or minus 2. So this, this the patient, suppose the patient, if don't want any glasses, the cataract surgery definitely they will end up in shouting at you. So this is the thing. Our as an optometrist, we should uh, we should be very clear in, in regarding the measurements. And which eye oil formula is used often? Often we used SRK by P. Like usually most people, so more myopic they will end up in. Uh, 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 large axial length, more hyperopic, hyperopic they end up in short axial length. In apart from that, usually we'll use SRK by SRK by T formula. If they, suppose if their uh, axial length is 26 around, we, get, we have to go with holiday as well as the Barrett. Now, nowadays, we are using a Barrett based upon the, uh, their ophthalmologist requirement. So we can go ahead for holiday and uh, under Barrett. For a, sh a short axial length, we will go for offer Q formula. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, from the clinical side, if we have any problems like they are not achieving the maximum vision after surgery, how will the patient come to us? What could be the psychological parameters? What would be there? Psychological parameters. How will they handle the condition? Or... Obviously, obviously. See, the pay, some some people will think on their own. Like, something. Some, I'll feel some blurred. And the Marie. Some people, their psychological the thinking is that ninga ellar kuda irukanga solvaanga laya ninga vandu ninga kannadi operation pannuvinga kannadi podringa so and the parameters so we should handle we should treat them like that so that's what i'm telling we should not uh, get ended up into this edukaga na cataract surgery panniyo na glasses podano we are using this technique so we are more risk what we are doing so if patient is having any uh, retinal problem or any corneal problem they know psychologically i am having some issues in my uh, retina i am having some issues in my corneal. we are going to do with the patient we should educate them before clearly so that uh, after post op, you will feel uh, if suppose if many if something has happened, we will be able to manage it. Yes, so, ma'am. The next question is how, how can prior, can prior use, use of CGL can affect IO surgery? Yeah, it's a good question, but actually. Uh, no, I'm not audible. No, I'm you're, not, you're audible actually, now. Actually, I'm not able to listen to you. It's better now, ma'am? This is breaking. Ma'am, I guess your signal is slightly weaker. Okay. Now it's better, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, so, sorry, something you're asking? No, no, I just read the third question for you. Yeah, how can prior use of CL can affect IO surgery? Yes, it will affect. Uh, see, obviously, the main, uh, whenever you're going to do the IO calculation, the main thing is our 
K1, K2 means corneal curvature. So definitely a use of CL will affect. So you have to tell the, uh, inform the patient to not to use at least bare minimum. We usually tell for two weeks. Two weeks, no need to use any CL. So that after two weeks, we can able to do the calculations. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, from the clinical perspective, again, who can go for monofocal lenses? Who can go for multifocal lenses? Multifocal lenses. Uh, multifocal lenses, those who wanted to read more, those who wanted to write, those who, the, some, uh, nowadays people are not able, no, don't want to wear their uh, uh, presbyopic glasses itself. So in that patient, sometimes, you know, I want, uh, I don't want any glasses for reading because it will... Uh, so we'll suggest, but main thing we should not multifocal means definitely there will be the rings. So they will get a minimum halos or something when they are driving at night. So we have to educate the patient accordingly, avoid driving while night. Monofocal lenses. Patients, uh, so we will not uh, advise patients, those who are having high diabetic, continuously the diabetic levels are changing and hypertensive, we, we won't advise for multifocal lenses because definitely there uh, there may be there some fluctuations will be there, so they will not able to uh, see clearly when, the, when there is a fluctuation in their diabetics, so we we will not we will inform the patient either they can monofocal and we have now now advanced lenses there it's head off lenses that then you will not you will not need any uh, rings only distance and intermediate you can see so those who wanted to uh, go for the system users they, those who wanted the mid range they will go for the head off lenses instead of using monofocal lenses uh, next will be how will the systemic conditions influence the post surgical management Yes, definitely the systemic conditions because if if you are operating the patient those who are having high diabetic, maybe after the post op definitely they will ended up with CME. So that this is what this will affect. Uh, so uh, actually, after po uh, cataract surgery, many people will get the CME, but we have to monitor it properly. But in case of high diabetics, definitely they will have the some retinal changes. So we have to inform the patient priorly regarding that you having this uh, you are you are having diabetes. So definitely some something may happen. It's not that if, uh, for every patient it will happen, but something may happen in future regarding. So we have to treat them, treat for the retina uh, uh, differently. Like that we have to educate the patient. There is one more question popping up. Uh, any new yeah. advancement in case of management of surprise refractive powers? Yes, any new advancement, that's what we are calculating the different formulas, right? So, uh, actually, the main protocol is to select the lenses which has the perfect A scan, perfect keratometry, and the perfect IOL, that A constant, as I mentioned. Even because, uh, make sure that whether you are doing optical or whether you are doing immersion. If you are doing optical, each and every lens brand has the two types of A constants. So, this is the main thing in management of refractive surprise. Like actually, you have to choose the lens visor. Any advert, the, then we have to calculate the formulas either the, the, based upon the axial length like SRKT and Holiday and OfferQ and, and Barrett. So we have to compare this, those and we have to choose the lens visor. Thank you. <laughs> no, actually, I'm not getting it. Thank you so much, ma'am. No, no, no. There's a that's nice in between. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was so nice to have you and the way you took the session, answered questions, it was so good. So, Anshi, ma'am, do you have any questions for our moderator today? No, uh, thank you so much, Sita Lakshmi. It was very nice the way you actually you. Nakshi told us you guided the students through the information. So, I'll just summarize what she said. So, selection of IUL based on the need of the patient, uh, a proper A constant proper A scan and keratometry are very, very important so that we, you know, cater to the needs of the patient and we don't end up in any kind of uh, post-refractive uh, errors because of the cataract surgery. Again, there were a few important points about multifocal and monofocal contact lens, I mean, uh, IOL selections as well as about 
educating patients not to wear contact lenses just before the surgery. So those are very small, small things, but very important roles where optometrists can play and inform the patients uh, so that they have a smooth pre and post cataract surgery. So over to you, Gomati. Thank you so much, Anshi ma'am. And I would like to also thank Jemma ma'am that's joined with us today. Thank you so much for joining Jemma ma'am. Ma'am, I'm so happy to see Sita joining us. So <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm happy to join here back. Yeah, I've started everything. <laughs> So I would like to share this instance, like even today I was teaching about IOL. So I used to, to you know, share a few points. I always used to tell there is one of our senior who is like our alumni. So ma'am, uh, Sita ma'am never actually, you know, she won't uh, make us feel like she's very much senior. She's always in a reachable point. So whenever any intern or external has got doubts, we first go to Sita ma'am and we'll get the doubts cleared. So she's always been in that point and we always never miss our lecture. So we used to have lecture at CMH at 7 a.m. in the morning. If it is going to be Sita Ma'am session, we never miss a lecture. So such a good person when it comes to teaching. So we were very happy to have you here with us today, Ma'am. So today morning thank also you, was telling you so my much, students. Girl. So you should not miss <laughs> their session. So I hope all my students is also going to get used to this particular session. So thank you so much for joining with us, Ma'am. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. So with this, we're coming to the conclusion of the session. So thank you all for joining with us today. If you got any doubts, please post the questions in the comment box. We'll get back to you with the answer. The exciting news for today, this particular week is that we're going to open our bachelor's in optometry admission. So for contact details, please click the link in the uh, links that I'll be providing in the description box. So we'll meet you all in the next episode. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, thank, thank you. Bye, ma'am. Bye, Sita.